level up, because we're fixed to take this thing to the next level. Show back. Let's work, let's work! Packer's gotta go. Really, he's squeezed. Go, 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 We don't have the right to be here, all right? You've earned it. You earned it through your hard work and through being blessed and being special and the things that you've done to get here. With that privilege goes great, great responsibility. We all got so much responsibility and more to each other than anything else. If we come through this camp where we care more about each other and the good of each other than we do about ourselves, we got it made. Everything will work out. Every decision that we make out, if we think about giving, if we think about accountability, if we think about the privilege that we have, and we think about the responsibility that we have to each other. Everything will fall into place. I feel that this year is really going to be important for our seniors. Uh, just coming in with a new coaching staff, we're going to have to be guys that lead by example and that do the right things day in and day out. We can't take days off. You know, you got to give everything you got to it. You can't say there's next year because there's not. There's no guarantee. There's not even a guarantee in the next play. So you just. As a senior, I've kind of realized, you know, I've got to give it all each play and then get back up and give it all again. We can't take days off. You know, we got to stay up top because we're, we're the target this year. People like Nate, we're really going to have to step up. And the coaches expect that out of us. And we expect it out of ourselves. We've got to make sure from inside out that the players hold each other accountable. They know uh, what it takes to win. They, they've been a part of winning. I, they, they've smelled it. They've tasted it. Uh, they want to keep winning, and, and we've got some leaders on our team that are going to keep doing that. Ben, 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 Ben. Good, right there. We've been through so many coaches, three different head coaches. At my position, I've been through five different position coaches. I've been through, you know, two knee surgeries, um, been through two losing seasons, but then, you know, we counteracted that with, you know, a 10-3 and three season in a bowl game last year. I try to look at the big picture, and we've been through it all when we were at the bottom of the barrel, and we've worked our way up. That's what we need to continue to do. I saw a dramatic change with Nathan Harold and for Tim Starson the second half of spring practice. I know Nathan went on a diet, Tim has changed his body. Both of these guys are our leaders uh, but by, by effort. They're not real vocal guys, but they're leaders on the field. The way I've done it is I feel like if there's nothing needed to be said, then there's no reason to say it. Or if I'm not backing up what I'm going to say, then I'm not going to say it because it just it's not going to come off right. You're not going to get the respect that you need. <laughs> Nate's a huge leader for our defense, and I try to lead as much as I can, you know, and guys look up to Nate and myself. You don't hear a lot of talk, but we just try to lead by example and just do the right things. I truly believe people would learn more from following your footsteps than following your advice. It's what they see you do, not what they hear you say. It takes guys like this, you know, to be, to, to first of all, to be close, to hold the team close. And when we say close, I'm not talking about, you know, we're all lovey-dovey on each other, but it's just, we're tight. Oh, he pressed up! Oh, this should be a touchdown? This is tough. Let's go, baby. Catch the ball! What's up? Yeah, yeah, boy! And we take it to the house. When all the guys are hanging together, it's definitely, uh, I mean, it can be pretty comical. You know, there's always someone, you know, checking on someone else. You know, there's always, you know, a lot of laughing and joking going on. We'll be hanging out in the room playing video games and just, you know, cracking jokes on each other. It's a pretty uh, diverse group of guys. You have people like Applin, you know, Applin, he can fill up a room. He can get a lot of attention when guys are in a room with him. And Frankie Jackson, people like that, you know. 
But for the most part, I think Nate and I are probably the most laid back. You can kind of relate to the football field when we're just hanging out, you know. Nate's not going to say a whole lot. When he does, you know, you're listening. And that's the same way as it is on the football field, you know. Nate and I don't talk a whole lot. We just try to lead by example. At the end of the day, the things I'm going to remember are, you know, just the brotherhood, you know, the fun that we have together, you know. Wins and losses are great, but, you know, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then, I mean, there's no reason to do it. Oh, run! Run! Are you kidding me? I just want the young guys to realize that, you know, and that goes back to having a good time on the football field. You can have fun, you can laugh, but when it's time to get serious, you need to lock in and, you know, do your job. It all comes down to you doing your job. Eleven guys. Get in, Dominic, get out. Oh, yeah, let's go. All day. Hey, Silver, hey, get into this, man. Let's go. Let's ride. Let's, let's go, man. We had our last scrimmage. I knew I wasn't going to play a whole lot. You know, it's mostly for the young guys and mostly to develop the depth and see where we are, where we're at coming out. You know, I knew I had to perform and just do well in the couple series that I did go in. <laughs> on the first drive, you know, I was disappointed as a group. We let you know, them guys score on us, and that's just unacceptable. We just didn't come out and set the tone like we usually do. Dang it. Nate and I got together, and we talked to a bunch of the guys, and a lot of the guys were, you know, just telling each other that it was unacceptable that we allowed it to happen. And, you know, we just told each other we got to go the next series. On my second drive, you know, I just I cut loose, really. No. No. I knew that we made some mistakes in the first series. I knew I had to play better, and I just came out and kept the motor running. No! 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 His actions, his work ethics, his, the way he goes about his approach to practice reinforces everything he says and everything we say as a coaching staff. So he has set the right model. Hey, big time play, come on. Even though I didn't play a whole lot, I stayed in the game. I watched the young guys and just tried to encourage them and coach them up as much as I could. Make plays. Get mean out there. Here we go, D! There you go, Q. Woo! There you go, Q. We need for Tim to do the things that he's been doing this fall camp. We need him to set the tempo and set the tone for our defensive line, even when he's off the field. Way to hold up, Tayshawn. Yep. The encouragement and the support and the foundation he has he has set as a starter or going out there first, we need him to continue that. D-Way, good job. Hand off hit. Woo! I see you out there. Hey, Buster. These guys are so vital to our team in every way. It's really important to me and all of us coaches that these guys, you know, have a great year. Not just winning, but have a great year. I want this to be special for Nathan. I want it to be special for Tim Starson. I mean, just because I see how important it is to him. We got a lot of guys on our team that this is really important. It's not just a thing to do. It's not just cool. It's important and it tells me that they get it. I think it was the fifth practice, you know, Nate was doing extra conditioning by himself, and that's where you can really find out who the leaders are on the team, when they don't need to be asked to do something. They just do it for the team, and do it for, really, to just be a champion. We owe it to each other to work hard and be responsible. You know, I just don't want to let my teammates down in the in the end. I don't want to let the coaches down. You know, the coaches have families on the line. You know, this is this is their job. And you know, if I feel like I let them down, I feel like I let their family down. And you know, their family is part of the, you know the whole family. So I don't want to let everybody down. So I got to keep you know working. It's back on the other end of the field. It's not, hey, look at me. I'm gonna get out here and run where all the coaches and and players see us. No, I hang around the field, but I didn't see him. You know, he didn't come up and tell me, hey, coach, I ran X amount after. He and Tim aren't those kind of guys. He's a guy that, hey, did it, does it, doesn't brag about it. That's how he gets to where he is right now. We've been evaluating the running backs really since we first got here. The media and everybody, they want a start. Well, guess what? You know all this. Going into the third scrimmage, coach told all the running backs that this was a very important scrimmage that will um, determine a lot. The last two scrimmages, Sir Gregory got the bulk of the carries and that was by design. I just felt like this was my last shot to kind of step up and um, just get the spot. 
We felt like that David and uh, Frankie had kind of separated themselves and we just wanted everybody to get one last opportunity. So Gregory, you know, he's battled a lot of injuries since he's been here. Uh, battled a few earlier in camp and so we just wanted to give him an opportunity to show what he can do. I did kind of feel like I, I was behind in a sense because I had missed two practices on um, that week. Actually missed like the, the, the past two practices before that scrimmage so I just want to come out focused and just have a good scrimmage. Absolutely, Sir Gregory wrapped, uh, wrapped himself around that opportunity. He had some tremendous runs. It was good just being able to you know, have a good scrimmage, kind of stand out. He had two touchdowns and really just said, hey, no, I'm, I'm still in this thing. And, and it was really good to see. He's battling it through. That's, that's the good thing to see. That's the good side to see. You know, competition, you know, it, it makes you or break you. And, I, and you know, evidently that's, you know, it's making him, you know, because he's continuing to push forward. <laughs> After that, I just felt like I showed the coaches that, okay, he can run the ball and that, that we need to get the ball in his hands. We've been evaluating the running backs really since we first got here. Really, it just came down to, to saying, you know, we're going to need more than one running back anyway, and we're going to need uh, more than one person to carry the football for us. So, when we do give them those carries, let's make sure it's in the best possible for position for them to be successful. But as we know, the media and everybody, they want a starter. They want a starter, okay? Well, guess what? You don't always get what you want, okay? You don't always get what you want. And we run things around here. We do things a little bit differently than everybody else, okay? So here's what I'm going to tell you. You're all three the starting running back. You're all three starting running backs, okay? I feel very confident, each and every one of you, that if we put you in the game, you're going to be able to do the job. It's really not about the one, two, three, because we all are going to play. We all have our different plays and our different um, you know, strengths. So even though he might start, I'm still going to give my chance to, to play and help the team out. All right, beast on three. One, two, three, beast. <laughs> David Oku, you can tell he's a veteran guy. He's just been off for a year. And you can tell he's a little rusty, learning a new offense. But each day, you know, you can see he's uh, he's picking it up. So Gregory is a guy that just needs to stay healthy. He needs more reps. Uh, he's a big downhill back that really needs just to have a physical, nasty mentality, you know, as far as that goes. And Frankie Jackson, you know, with the ball in his hands, he's probably the most electric guy that we have. But we just got to get him to be able to be a complete back. The protection, the different adjustments during games and all that. And so those three factors combined, you know, with, with all three of those guys kind of helps us create specific things that they can do well, especially early in the season until they get a foundation. Coach said that if someone starts and someone else comes in and they get the high hand that they're we're going to go with them, and that's totally, you know what I'm saying, fair. And we expect that even if Frankie start and they get the high hand or I start and Frankie get the high hand, we all um, just understand the game of football and we all support each other. Coming in with a new team, we're trying to use everyone's strengths, and, uh, and you need a lot of depth at that position too. But we will have a starter name by the first game, but at the same time, you know, we'll play two or three guys. We'll try to, especially early on in the season, utilize their strengths. Now we just preparing for the season, preparing for Oregon, just just focusing on the um, plays, focusing on the game scheme, and just getting better, and, and just focusing on being Oregon. I've heard a couple guys say, hey, I'm getting stronger, you know, right now. That, that should give you confidence. Coach Russell has been one of the bright spots that we've had since we've been here. Let's go, Frankie! Hey, taking it back, up and across, up and across, set! Hey, that group back, get back, attack the line, let's go! Pick it up, pick it up! Coach Russell, we feel like we got one of the best strength coaches uh, in the country. He's on the cutting edge. I mean, the way we stretch, the way we prepare, the way we work out. Hit! Let's work, let's work! Coach Malzahn talks about being the fastest playing team in the country, and we're going to set the tone right from the start and, and let them know, you know, that's how we're going to start every practice. Good bars coming out through the 15. You know, we're a no huddle team, and the way that he trains is no huddle training. First group, set! When our warm up is fast, we always run. We, we're in an uh, athletic position. Hit! We we'll always run up to the line. The second group that's getting ready, they always have to be alert. We're a lot more disciplined. We have to line up at a certain pace. Everything is tempo and everything has to be done right. Everything's based around technique and it's about getting better and getting ready, getting prepared. 
translate that onto the field, we have to be alert. When we're running on and off the field and we're going fast, we're trying to be the fastest team in college football. So Coach Russell is definitely training us to be that way. Determination and that um, dedication that we have when it comes to stretching, like it's, it's very serious. He don't, Coach Russell don't take it for a joke. We're kind of setting the tone with practice. We talk about starting fast, sustaining great effort and focus through the practice and finishing practice strong. And it, it starts with a warm-up starting fast. The way that he trains is different than anybody else. The way we stretch is different than anybody else. His passion, oh yeah, was with me at Auburn. He knows how I react. I met Coach Malzahn during my time at Auburn. Uh, struck up a pretty good relationship. We were about the same same type of things, discipline, accountability. We, we knew it started there. Just knew when, when Coach asked me to, to come be a part of it, it was going to be something special. And uh, just liked what he was all about and where, where he saw this thing going. Coach Russell has been one of the bright spots that we've had since we've been here. Our players uh, really believe in him. Coach Russell is, uh, is exactly what we needed. He's a, he's a big plus for us. and. Um, the conditioning part, he's putting it in our um, hearts and minds to train like a champion, not only want to be one, but think like one. We've been very blessed so far with few injuries in fall camp, which uh, is very unusual. And, you know, I take that directly to the way that Coach Russell trains them physically and mentally. And we'll continue to do things a little bit different, you know, even in the fall. Don't waste the day in here, all right? Don't waste the day just because you're a little sore. Work that soreness out. Let's get better in here. Let's go. Get a break. Hey, hey, eat on three. One, two, three. Hustle around. Hustle around. Most of the time, people during fall camp, they lose a lot of weight, lose a lot of strength and stuff like that. But I think Coach Russell brought us the edge that's going to help us in the football season with us going through fall camp, grinding it out, but still, on another hand, getting stronger and still getting more flexible and getting ready for the season. Work at a great tempo now, let's go! Coach Russell's never in a bad mood as far as energy level. He always is at, a, from a scale to 100, every single day, I never seen him come anything less than 100. He's always pumped, and that's what um, we need, because in the weight room, if you're not feeling good, we need a coach that will be able to bring up energy and help us uh, to get our minds right. We want things to, to look good. We want them to be done properly. We're keeping the guys engaged. We're, we're trying to uh, cultivate an atmosphere, like I said earlier, of enthusiasm and just getting after it and making them see, educating them really, making them see the benefits and how this translates to what they do out in the field. Keep it up, keep it up, all the way down. He believed. That's the, that's the thing that I love about Coach Russell. He always believed. He believed that we can be great and we can always get better. He never let us settle for less or settle for where we are now. He always want to increase. Drive it up. Last one, last one. Punch. Pull it in. Good job, man. That's the thing he brings to our um, weight program. He's really intense, so he makes sure that he pushes us to the limit to be the best that we can be. The biggest difference I see from the time we left spring is a lot of our a lot of our older guys have changed their body, and it's hard for older guys to change. Let's go, Frankie. Last year when I went through fall camp, I lost like 10 pounds. Now I'm still at the same weight, but still getting stronger. So I mean, it's a big difference that I can tell and that I notice. Hey, I've been extremely impressed with the energy and enthusiasm and the type of weight that's being lifted in here right now. I've heard a couple guys say, hey, I'm getting stronger, you know, right now. That, that should give you confidence, all right, because there's not too many people getting stronger during camp right now. So play with that confidence uh, that you gained in here. When it comes September 1st on that field, it's going to be crazy because, I mean, I don't think any of us will be tired unless we go to about triple o OT. So <laughs> Coach Russell has got us where we need to be, and he's only going to get us that much further. One, two, three, Sound Sound champs. Champs. Everything has to be different if we want to have a chance to upset these. Because guess what, guys? They're not giving us any chance at all. We're 11 days out. I hope you understand the urgency. Last night I couldn't even sleep. Got home, didn't want to sleep. I was excited when I got here. There's so much excitement. You know, we're about to play in Eugene, Oregon on the 1st of September. The whole nation's going to be watching. We, it's our time to make a statement. Coach Malzahn is excited. You know, uh, he's really, you can just tell he's, you know, super excited about it. Probably the last two weeks I've flipped the switch, and, and I want our players to do that same thing with the urgency. So I've just been trying to encourage those guys that it's time. Everything has to be different if we want to have a chance to upset these. Because guess what, guys? They're not giving us any chance at all. And the only people is just people in this room. And you want to shock the college football world? We can do it. I want you to know we can do it. 
Is it going to be easy? Crap, no, it's not going to be easy. They're one of the best teams in the country. It's a huge challenge for us. Our coaches and our players understand that, and this is part of the process. And as coaches, we'll learn a whole lot about our players. Coach Mazon tells us that no one expects us to be Oregon, but we have to believe for ourselves, and we have to um, practice hard and execute perfectly. No turnovers, no penalties. It is almost kickoff time right now. We're always going to have people that, uh, that don't believe in us. But uh, we're, we're such a close-knit group of people and such a good team. And I feel like our chemistry is so good this year, even compared to what it was last year. You know, it doesn't matter what people on the outside say about our team. We know what we can do and we know what we're capable of. Uh, capable of. We believe as a team that, that if we go out there focused and ready to play, that we can upset the guys. We have an awesome opportunity to make a statement. And I feel like if we just take care of our business and practice day in and day out and don't take days off, we'll be fine. We have a lot of talent on this team. It's on very exciting, but I'm trying to stay relaxed and not just get too hyped up, but just trying to stay relaxed and just and, and just focus on the um, goal and that stuff, you know, prepare for the season, win, win, win. We're just getting our mindset, you know. We're going to go to Oregon and we're going to beat Oregon. And we're just trying to prepare for that. Just ready to get out there and play. We're ready to, um, to show the nation. Like Coach Mazon came in, he said we want to turn a state into a elite program, a consistent top 25 team, number one offense, number one defense. And we believe that we have the talent and the coaches here to do that. And beating Oregon will be a great way to start there.